Don't tell me I actually fell in love with the prince. A little bit soon, maybe you're infatuated with him, but okay. <laughs> Hey internet, it's Jessica and welcome back to Locked Heart. So we're gonna continue where we left off and it's basically uh, Aura trying to figure out how she can help every the, the Deluxe's sister Gold uh, in order to bring it to the curse because she's still under a curse. Hopefully we'll learn more about that as we go along. Anyway, Dion seemed to evaporate when the chores needed to be done and today Miss Maria was particularly frustrated over it. After she fired off a lecture to Lillian Royal for allowing such behavior, I volunteered to go find him. Only I restored some peace to the household. However, finding him was easier than said than done. I've checked every room. I passed, but I couldn't find him anywhere. I shuddered at the thought of returning to Miss Maria without him. As I roamed the halls, I noticed that the door to Sol's workroom was ajar. It seemed unlikely that Dion was in there, but I had to check for my own safety. I peeked in. Oh. Aww. Sleeping <laughs> because he said he was gonna make a dress for us. I almost knocked, but stopped my hand when I saw Sol sleeping on his desk. There were papers scattered beneath his hand and on the floor. They seemed to be sketches of pattern design. There were a few mannequins standing like soldiers along the walls and wearing unfinished clothing. One wore an unfinished white dress. The honesty of his workplace brought a warm smile. This is the real soul. I can feel it in my chest. I snuck up into the room, admiring the skill and beauty of the sketches I avoided stepping on. Mm. I froze. I looked over at him, waiting until I was sure that he was still asleep. I couldn't deny that he had lovely features. I blushed at the thought, <laughs> why am I looking at him right now? What the hell? Realizing that I've been staring in my efforts to be sure I could escape unnoticed. Before I could dwell on it, Sol spoke. Sorry. I narrowed my eyes at him in confusion. He seemed to be asleep, but all of a sudden, the comment in his expression contorted into that of pain. I promised to do better, so please... No. No. Beats of sweat rolled down his forehead, and he continued to cry in his sleep. Soul? Afraid of what kind of nightmare had tortured him like that, I shook his shoulder. Soul, wake up! His eyes shot open, and he flung himself away from his desk. Now on the ground, trembling upon his knees, Sol gazed at me with a terrified expre expression. He was ghostly pale and there were tears in his eyes. Oh, why? There were the eyes of a child after seeing a monster. I knelt down and embraced him. Shh. It's just a dream. Lady Aura? I reached up and stroked his hair, resting, at m resting my cheek upon his head. Don't worry, you're safe now. Sol didn't answer with words. His arms came up and gently held me back. Aww. So sort of that I turned into a hug. I tried to let it, I tried to let him go, but he clung to me. S Sol? Not yet. I know it's inappropriate, but can we stay like this for a little longer? It's a bit random, but okay, since you know you're not feeling well. <laughs> Please. I didn't have the heart to reject him. In the end, I wasn't able to find Dion. Couldn't help thinking he really did have the ability to evaporate. I finished cooking dinner and then went to help Lily set the table. Sol stepped into the dining room, looking frightfully exhausted. Prince Sol, you do not look so good. Are you okay? Uh, yes, I'm just tired. I didn't want to say anything. But after seeing him so tormented in his sleep, I was really worried about him. It must have shown in his face because he walked to my side and placed a hand on my head. His fingers slipped into my hair when his hand moved. Don't worry. I bl wow, okay, all of a sudden we're just flirting like that? Okay. I, bl <laughs> I blanked at the sensation of Sol's hand and a reassuring statement, completely unprepared for it. But then he leaned closer to whisper in my ear. Thank you. For earlier. The warmth of his breath clung to my skin. Thinking about how close his lips were to my ear, I felt my heart beat double in its pace. All I could do was nod as heat spread across my cheeks. Suddenly remembering that we weren't alone, I shifted my gaze to Lily. Oh, this is so awkward because she likes him too. The shock on her face was not a secret, and it was more than enough to return my senses. I stepped away from Sol, hoping my reaction didn't seem too unnatural. Sol's cheeks instantly darkened and he would draw his hand back to his side. Uh, sorry. An awkward silence filled the room. I hadn't expected Sol to do something like that with Lily standing nearby. It caught me so unaware that I couldn't think of a casual way to spin it. Like a saving grace, Dion sauntered into the room, whistling to, whistling to a small tune. I could have kissed him for such a perfect timing. Dion! What's up? We've been looking all over for you. Where have you been? Offering a shrug and a smirk, Dion dismissed my question. 
That's a secret. I sighed at his answer, but it did no good. Dion shifted his attention across the room, no doubt sensing the tension I'd failed to disperse. He raised his eyebrow when he's when his eyes fell back on me. What did I miss? I glanced at Lily and immediately felt a pang in my chest. She didn't lift her head. Nothing. Since you're still here, I'll just go ahead and finish dinner. Awkward couldn't even describe the strained smile I forced on my face before I, ex I escaped the kitchen. But even as I disappeared into my room, I felt I still felt the heat of Soul's gaze on the back of my neck. I know he watched as I left. So I think we're in Soul's route, right? I think that's what we're doing right now. Because I, I don't even know what room I'm in. <laughs> Touching my fingers tips over my lips, I closed my eyes and tried to make my heart slow down. Please, don't tell me I actually fell in love with the prince. A little bit soon, maybe you're infatuated with him, but okay. <laughs> I barely slept that night, fussing and worrying over the love triangle I foolishly stumbled into. I had stopped these feelings before the roots reached too far into my head to weed out. Lily said that she wouldn't be upset since we're friends. I don't believe that. I think she's just saying that to be nice. But obviously she's not going to be like, I'm okay with this. But I still didn't think it was fair that, that I pursue these feelings when I know how much she likes soul. But I didn't know what to do about this. Lily openly told me she wasn't going to confess her feelings, and it would be wrong for, of me to tell Sol how she feels. And Sol was no doubt too dense to notice on his own. I sighed, wandering in the halls, which, which I have been doing since breakfast. Oh, oh, Lady Aura! A startled voice yanked me from my thoughts. I jumped away from Sol, who was walking down the hall in the opposite direction. A deep blush spread across his face. My apologies, you seem so deep in thought. Do... Do you have a problem? I tilted my head to the side, confused by Sol's shaken demeanor. He always seems so calm and collected by everything. It's unnerving because the shyer he behaved, the more anxious I felt. Things were changing too quickly for me to keep up. Shaking my head a little to get my mind on track, I looked up at Sol. I'm just wondering, what do you think of Lily? Have you fallen in love before? These are so obvious questions that I like you. <laughs> I guess we'll just ask this, like I don't freaking know. My question caught Sol a bit of off balance. He boggled at me for a moment, jaded eyes wide at the chalk. You were deep in thought because of that? I shrugged, a little embarrassed by how amused he was. Just wondering. He tipped his head away, hands still in near his mouth. His blush had receded, but a dusting of pink remained. Actually, I have. Really? I stared at him with deep curiosity welling up. Yes. It was seven years ago when father brought me with him to the city for the first time. And? I was in awe, seeing so many amazing things, but only one caught my attention. I urged him to continue, excited as I watched the sparkle in his eyes seem to dance all around him. So beautiful. I can almost remember it like it was yesterday. He closed his eyes and placed his hand on his breastbone. His smile completed his dreamy state. For the first time, I had this fluttery feeling in my chest. I may not have felt it before, but I'm sure it was love at first sight. So, what was this person like? Person? I knew it! I knew he was gonna be like, he fell in love with something else, not a person. <laughs> Sol opened his eyes, staring at me as if I'd gone mad. I was talking about a beautiful dress that was displayed in the tailor shop window. I gaped at him, lips parted in shock. For a moment, I thought Sol was the best actor on earth, but his genuine aura told me that he was serious. You fell in love with a dress? Saying it slower did not make it any- didn't make the idea sound any less strange. Sol didn't seem to notice, his smile unwavering. Indeed. Poor Lily. <laughs> He's very- Sol is very, like, I don't want to say innocent. He is- he is very dense, like Aura keeps saying, but... I guess- I guess innocent is the proper word, I guess, because he's so up in the clouds all the time and not really noticing like what's going on around him. To think that their true rivals are actually dresses, how can she compete with that? Trying to return to my original objective of disengaging from the love triangle, I went to form- I went for a more direct question. How about a person? Have you liked a girl before? Sol didn't answer at first, his cheeks suddenly red. When he turned to face away, I saw the elegant angles his jaw created, making my heart spin out of control. <laughs> Good angles on your chin there. <laughs> I know Sol is attractive, but why am I only uh, reacting now? I do not act like myself whenever I'm with you. Oh, okay. I was so distracted with my excited heartbeat that I missed Sol's reply. He was murmuring something, but I couldn't quite understand it. What did you say? Uh, nothing. An awkward silence drifted between us. Sol appeared thoughtful about something, and I suddenly was too nervous to ask what. 
The truth is, I don't know what it feels like to be in love. He shifted his gaze back to me, the red on his cheeks seeming to deepen. I resisted the urge to look down, struggling to maintain my composure and not to assume anything. Though, perhaps I have already fallen for someone. <laughs> he's so obvious, but he's so like dense about it. <laughs> A soft sigh followed Soul's confession, making it very hard to figure out what he meant. Who is he talking about? Oh, Aura, come on, you're being dumb now. You know who it is. Really? Soul gazed at me for a moment, his jewels eyes glistened like a mid-afternoon sun streaming in the window. I didn't realize how hot my cheeks were until Soul's cool finger brushed against them, moving a stray lock of hair behind my ear. Soul sighed, his finger lingering in my ear. I wonder. But before I could get my thoughts under control and say something more than his name, Soul pulled his hand away and walked towards the window. To tell the truth, it doesn't matter. I doubt she would love me back. I tilted my head back and my brow instinctively furrowed. Ignoring my fluttering heartbeat, I tried again to figure out who Soul meant. <laughs> Girl, it's you! Lily wasn't shy about her feelings, but then Soul was too dense about, about that sort of thing. Still, that last part bothered me. No matter who he meant, I didn't understand why he was giving up without even trying. Soul didn't seem like himself. What makes you say that, Soul? I stepped closer. Sighing, Soul rested against the windowsill. I'm not the perfect prince you and Lady Lily keep calling me. I act this way because it's my role. I'm sure that wouldn't change how Lily feels about you- I- Oh, I clapped my hands over my mouth, eyes open wide. That was the one thing I was not supposed to say. Before I could try to recover, Sol looked over at me. His smile was soft and but sad. Something in his expression told me the truth. You knew? So, why pretend that you don't? I cannot accept or reject her feelings for me. Oh. I... I cannot bear to hurt my friend. Oh! Yeah, because, okay, so yeah, I, I know it's obvious like, he's gonna fall for the OC, but like, he just doesn't wanna- He's just pretending because he doesn't wanna hurt Lily. I mean, that's nice and all, but you should still tell her to stop giving her false hope, you know? I didn't know what to say. I knew Lily wouldn't stop being Soul's friend, but it wasn't right to speak in her- Speak for her in this situation. Lily, Lily is a great person. She deserves someone better than me. Soul. I wanted to say something reassuring to Sol, but my thoughts were confused. He didn't say- he said he didn't feel the same towards Lily. But if not Lily, was it some girl he knew in the past, before the curse happened? I wonder if that's why Sol seemed unhappy. He lost the girl he loved, and he thinks he, she won't accept him after all these years. When I looked up at him, I saw his gaze drifting out the window. I am a puppet with its strings attached still to its master. No matter what I enjoy or love in life, I have to live up to my father's expectations. I hesitated, surprised to hear Sol's admission. i had been here at the mansion for quite some time now, but this is the first time Sol lowered his guard up with me. I wonder if I will still be accepted if I bring down the perfect facade I have been keeping up for so long. Sol, um, not to be disrespectful, but your father isn't here anymore. Can't you just be yourself again? Soul twisted to look at me in surprise, lifting the melancholy away from his face for a moment. I, I understand, like, because whole, his whole life he's, like, basically trained to be the perfect heir and stuff like that. You can't just, like, forget about that in a matter of a day. Because, like, he's so, he's so trained to do that and act a certain way. It's going to take some time for him to be himself and for other people to accept that. Because, let's say, example, his family... All they know him for is being the princely guy and whatever. And the only person, aside from Aura, who confronted him about it was Dion, his brother. He even said, like, I wish you would act like yourself, and he hasn't. His shoulders then slumped as he shook his head. The memories haunt me every night. I always see him watching my every move, and his disappointed look whenever I mess up. It's paralyzing. A sharp pain dug in my chest. Seeing Soul like this, so hurt and vulnerable and sad, was painful. My heart was still not beating properly, and this feeling wasn't good at all. So, you see, Lady Aura, Sol turned his body towards me, still leaning against the window. I felt him looking at me, though I'm not sure he really saw me anymore. Even if I were in love with someone, I always have this list of potential wives thanks to my father. It was just my fate. The thought of Sol being with someone didn't, and he didn't have feelings for her left me uncomfortable and bothered. But what bothered me more was the thought of Sol being with another girl. It's your life, Sol. You should be allowed to live as you want. I blurted this statement out before Sol could say anything else. When he looked over at me, his, his brow furred into a confused tangle. Those beautiful green eyes stared at me like I lost my mind. Well, it's just... Lady Aura, what you're proposing is not so simple. 
If it were, I would have done so already. I'll always be tied to my father's strings. Biting my lips and shifting to one side, I spoke the first thing I thought of. You'll be able to get the ties. I'll cut the strings. Hey, love me instead. <laughs> let's, let's, let's do this. If you can't, then I'll cut them. I want you to be happy, soul. After speaking, I bowed my head, embarrassed that I made such a bold proposal. When only silence greeted me, I looked up towards Sol, as a nervous, as nervous as I was curious. He didn't seem happier after what I said, more like lost. Do you realize what you're saying, Lady Aura? I flinched. My landlady used to say that I often acted impulsively without thinking things through. However, this was not something I had to think about. I only wanted to bring a smile to Sol's face. Yes, I do. Remembering what Sol asked before, I tried another tactic. In response to your earlier question, yes, you will be accepted. A flicker of hope passed over Sol's face, but it was still fleeting. How can you be so sure? They're your family, Sol. How can they not? He seemed unsure of my words, still hesitating by the window. When I looked closer, I saw that he was biting his lip, which suggested Sol did want to believe what I said. I searched my memories, and the perfect example came to mind. Do you remember what Dion said a couple of weeks ago? How about he missed you being yourself? Shouldn't that tell you? I lost strength in my voice. That's breaking down. Instead of hopeful smiles, Sol's expression became cold. Colder than I thought he could ever appear. Sol? With all due respect, Lady Aura, my older brother is the reason I'm trapped in this role. At first, I didn't understand what he meant. Uh, right. Dion should have been the heir. I wonder why. Before I could collect to speak my thoughts, Sol turned away. Sorry, Lady Aura, but I'd like to be alone. But Sol! I stopped when he turned away from me, my shoulders drooping in with dejection. The topic was obviously hurting him, but I couldn't think of anything comforting to say. Okay, Sol, I understand. Good luck with your work today. I hurried out of the room, my chest tight with pain. Yikes! Yeah, Aura is definitely the, the kind of person who would like speak before she thinks. As Aura dashed down the hall, another figure made his way closer from the opposite direction. Oh! Well, that was a rather interesting conversation. Forcing a grin that didn't hide the genuine con concern from Dion's expression, Sol flinched and twisted his face for him. Sol attempted to hide his feelings behind a small smile. How long were you standing there, brother? Who knows? Silence drifted between them for a moment. Dion sighed. I'm glad you're finally being honest with your feelings. Aura was right about what she said. Sol smile faded as his gaze drew to the window again. You have the right to decide be because that's what you want, not what everyone expects you to. That's rich, brother, coming from you. Dion flinched as if Sol's words were physical was a physical strike. He hadn't heard Sol speak this way. His voice was cold and distant. After all, you did whatever you wanted to do, leaving everyone else to pick up your responsibilities. Sol, I, I never wanted to burden you with being the heir. How can I believe that when you've done nothing but drop your responsibilities onto me for seven years? Dion went quiet, his face and posture tense with, con with conflict. He looked at Sol with a pain streak through his brown eyes as if he wanted to tell something but no words fell from his lips. Sol closed his eyes, sighing as he touched the fingertips on his forehead. If I turn my back as the heir, father was going to marry off gold to a man of his choice. I wouldn't let him do that to her sister. Oh, that's why! He's trying to protect his sister. Oh, no! Because it's true. Then if, if the two brothers don't take over, then the daughter will be the heir. Basically control her life. Dion's lips parted. His brown iris is now tarnished with shock. He had no idea their father could be so underhanded. Shame and anger flushed over Dion's cheeks, but he hedged his response. So our father wouldn't go through with that plan? How would you know? It's not like you were around to protect gold from father. Sol opened his eyes and stared at Dion from side, brow furrowed with annoyance. It was unsettling for Dion to see Sol so angry after so many years of pretending he didn't know Sol's smile was fake. Especially when Dion knew Sol was never was never told what to re what really happened. The real reason why he was removed as heir. Dion shrunk where he stood, sadness washing over his face. Why why didn't you talk to me, Sol? Because I can't trust that my older brother will be there when I need him. Dion looked up at Sol, pressing his lips together. There was so much he wanted to say, but the words wouldn't form. They were stuck in his heart, a dagger that he had carried for years, but he still could not dislodge. As of a sigh deflated his chest, Dion bowed his head and excused himself from the room. Sol didn't stop him. 
Well, that explains a lot, but it still doesn't explain why Dion was removed from there. There's still a secret there, so we'll find out about it later. Ever since that day, Sol and Dion hadn't said a word to each other. Sol threw his attention into his work, and Dion just disappeared for hours on end. Occasionally, they would show up for dinner at the same time, but neither said a word. It made the room very uncomfortable. The silence only broke the silverware clinking upon dishes. Couldn't help but wondering what happened between them after I left so hastily that day. Then there was the curse that yet to be broken. I'm so confused. There are too many things to think about. I sighed, flopping down on my bed. The sheets gave a loud poof before settling into a pile of wrinkly around me. It was tiring with all these complications yet not a single idea to make things simple again. I should sleep. I looked around me, but it was all black. Hello? Am I dreaming? Aura. Whoa. Spinning around, I noticed a tall, beautiful woman that hadn't been there a second step before. Her long blonde hair shimmered with light and her hazel eyes sparkled. She looked young, but I couldn't tell she was many, many years old. Her body was covered by ragged clothes and old clothes, which didn't suit her beauty at all. Just to be sure, I pinched my arm. It didn't hurt. Hello, Aura. Do you know who I am? I shook my head. Did not recognize this woman at all. Try, dear. I'm sure you'll think of the answer. I tried to think of who she might be. As I stared at her, I noticed a few teddy bear charms hanging off the belt that peeked from beneath the clothes. So this is the- I'm assuming this is the lady who cursed them, right? That's the, the witch. But she has blonde hair, so that makes me wonder. And brown eyes. That makes me wonder. I'm, I I, I want to, like, give a theory that maybe Dion is not the actual- His mother is not the same as Sol's mother. Because they both have blonde hair, but- Sol has green eyes, and Dion has brown eyes, but then again, Gold has blue eyes, like their sister. So, I don't know what the dad looks like, but, you know, that kind of gives me a way, like, maybe Dion's mother is this lady? Maybe? I don't know. They look very familiar. Ah, uh, could it be? She nodded, seeming to read my thoughts. Yes, that's right. I am the toy maker that came to the deluxe mansion seven years ago. I apologize for seeming rude. I'm just not sure why you're here in my dream. The toy maker giggled, her face gentle with understanding. Somehow she wasn't evil as, as I would have imagined. I came because I wanted to speak to you about the curse. I'm sure you have heard of the story of why I cursed this place. You wanted to punish Lord Deluxe for his cruelty. Yes. He is a very cruel man, even on his own flesh and blood. I know because I was watching them before I came that day. Lord Deluxe had such an amazing children each special in their own way, and yet and yet he chose to bind their wings instead of letting them fly. The middle child has so much imagination and creativity in him. It shines so brightly in his eyes when he smiles. Couldn't agree more. Soul's amazing designer. But the only time I've ever seen him genuinely smile is whenever he talks about designing clothes. Exactly! He's an artist! Let him be this! <laughs> I hope that losing his status with having and having all this important to him reduced the childhood toys would teach him to appreciate what he had. Press my fingers together and sighed. Her pretty features crumpled with disappointment. Sadly, I was wrong. Um, can you tell me why gold didn't change back like everyone else? How can the curse be broken? I was worried Lord Deluxe might not have a change of heart, so I created a second key with gold's heart. What? The toy maker pointed at my chest. I felt strange warmth, like a small heartbeat against mine. Surprised, I reached into my shirt and pulled out the locket my mother gave me so long ago. My locket? That locket used to belong to Gold Deluxe. She gave it to your mother as a gift. Your mother was a kind woman. I didn't curse her like the others. Instead, I sent her home with Gold's heart in the locket. I erased all her memories of working for the Deluxe, leaving only a message that it must be returned to her someday. Wait, Gold's heart is in this locket? I quickly took it off and held it in my hands. Within my palms, I felt the same warm heartbeat. I was supposed to send your mother back when Lord Deluxe died, but Rua, was, she wasn't in good health at the time. My heart ached upon remembering how once healthy and cheerful mother was uh, plagued by before the terrible illness over a year ago. I'm so sorry for what happened to Rua. I remember mother used to tell me stories about how much she loved her previous work, that she wished she could introduce me to the wonderful children she cooked for. I never knew she was working for the Deluxe family, but now that I do, I'll definitely find a way to save them. So please, tell me how to break the curse. Aura, this is why I came to you. Something has happened with the curse. I looked away from the locket and stared at the toy maker, confused. Her pretty features were full of concern. What do you mean? The curse was supposed to break if the locket came within the same room as gold. As you notice, everyone else turned back. However, the toy maker tipped her head in my hands. 
Look at your locket. What do you see? I hesitated, not sure what she expected me to see, but I did look and as she asked. Oh, it has some rust on it. Yes, you see, Aura, gold is pure metal. Waving a slender hand in the shape of a symbol, the toy maker created a faint image of gold. I only knew it was her because of this I seen a picture I've seen a picture of her in the room. That locket is made out of pure gold. It may have tarnished over time, but it should have not rusted. Gold gave me a bright smell before fading away. I held the locket close to my chest. So then, what could have caused it? There's a distressed heart who wishes the curse to remain. Its emotional turmoil got tangled in its magic and it seems the locket was affected. Until that heart is healed, the rust in the locket will not clear and it will remain sealed. The first- Oh, so we have- That's why. Someone's hurt. We have to cure the broken heart and then it will help gold in the end. First one I thought of was soul. But why would he make such a wish when he longs to see his sister again? Yet, I was sure that his heart is in distress with soul. I couldn't prove it, but that's what I felt inside. Gently, I held the locket out again. It is on the dark rust, clinging to what must have been a pretty gold locket once upon a time. The longer I looked at it, the more certain I became. So, if I can clear the rust from the locket, I can break the curse. Yes, Aura. If you're able to change the person's wishes, the rust should disappear. I nodded with a determined smile on my face. Sweeping the lock back into my around my neck, I thanked the toy maker for her help. Piece of advice for consideration, Aura Rinaldi. I paused, both curious and concerned about what she was about to say. It isn't always about cutting the chains of the past. This could lead you to the answers you've been searching for. What does that mean? What answers? What? <laughs> okay, guys, I'm gonna end the episode here. So we are officially- I think we were officially in Soul's Root in the last part. I just didn't realize it, but uh, now it's confirmed we're in Soul's Root. So I will finish up his route, do both the good and bad endings. I, I, I hope I got enough answers to make it the good ending, but I'm not sure yet, so we'll see. Uh, but this is interesting. So the curse was basically interrupted because one of the the- brothers, including Royal at this point, was um, unhappy with that, what was going on, so they wanted the, the curse to stay. And I'm assuming this one is talking about Soul because we're in his route right now, so I we have to make sure he's happy again and make sure he can be himself, because that's his whole point. It's not about like, you know, being in love with him or whatever, it's about him getting to be himself because he can't do that, or he hasn't been able to do that for years. So hopefully we'll be able to do that now. And yeah. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this episode of Locked Heart, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to join the companions. And if you would like to help support the channel on Patreon, the link is in the description. Get early access to videos, videos for Patreon only, the Discord server to come talk to me, and a bunch of other stuff as well. Or you can support the channel for free with gonkbox.com slash a girl and a game. All you have to do is make an account, open up on your mobile, tablet, or your computer, download the games and play them, and you will donate real money, which will help me continue this series and continue the channel overall. Okay, so this is get this is getting interesting. I, I like it. It's it's a little bit it's a little bit corny, but it's not like in a bad way if you get what I mean. But um, yeah, you guys let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. What do you think? What the fuck kind of question is that? You lied to her. It probably won't make her change her mind, but I regret what happened. She lowered her hands onto his stomach and let her hands glide over his well-toned abdomen. <laughs> What the fuck am I writing? Oh my god.